Hi, everyone. Welcome to join today's Tech Talk. My name is Ben. I will be your moderator and speaker. Before I introduce the speakers, I have a few housekeep items. Uh, all participants are automatically unmuted throughout the session. We will be using Slack to communicate. So uh, take a moment to join us, the, commu the community Slack channel, which is copied below, aluxio.io slash Slack. You can find it in the screen. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any trouble joining the Slack, feel free to message me your questions instead, and I will share it with the group on Slack too. In today's session, uh, I will give a brief, we will together give a brief presentation, and then we will have a Q&A session in the end, and we can answer all of your questions. Uh, you can join the Slack channel, post it in or into the chat box, and don't hesitate to send your question anytime. Lastly, today's session is being recorded and will be available for on-demand playback. We will email you the link to the presentation as well. We will start for a few in a few minutes before any, everyone joining. And uh, yeah, that's thanks for joining the session and hope you enjoy the talk. Okay, let's start. So today's topic is about optimizing latency sensitive queries for Presto at Facebook. And this talk is a joint talk between team from Aluxio and team from Presto. We will have Rohit Jain, James Sun from Facebook, and Bin Fan from Aluxio to uh, split the work and we'll talk about our latest collaboration. If you have any question, feel free to go to the link below, which is www.aluxio.io slash slack and raise your question there. So uh, without further ado, let's start the presentation and I would like each presenter to uh, introduce themselves a little bit. So yeah, here you go. Um, I'm not sure if everyone can hear me. Um, my name yes, is James. Okay, oh, yeah, good. Uh, my name is James. I'm from Facebook, a software engineer. I've been working on Presto for um, three and a half years. Hey, uh, this is Rohit. Um, I, I've been working in Presto for six months now. Uh, before that, uh, I have like a decade of experience in software engineering, uh, mostly working in the distributed system. In Presto, I'm focusing on latency sensitive queries in Presto and trying to make them faster for our different use cases. Uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, Rahid and James. My name is Ben. I'm the one of founding engineers on Aluxio team. Uh, I was, before joining Aluxio, I was working in Google and uh, have been working in the distributed systems for about a decade. So uh, let's start maybe talking about the agenda today. First, we'll talk about overview, and James will talk about the overview. James and Rahid will talk about overview, the architecture and problems, and, and how we decided to re-architecture and, and what's the solution and also the performance analysis. And then I will talk about how we uh, design and build this Aluxio local cache to work with Presto workers. And in the end, we'll talk about the timeline. So maybe you can start. All right, oh, I will just give you an overview of um, Presto in general. So Presto is a distributed SQL compute engine. Um, Presto is all about how we can parse, analyze a given SQL string and um, generate an execution plan so that the Presto machines or servers, they will fetch data um, from a external storage. Um, after it gets the data, it will process the data based on the semantics of the SQL and return the result back to the end users. So that's the basic concept. Um, next slide, please. Um, Presto is open source. It's um, It was originally open source in 2013, 2012 um, from Facebook. Uh, it has been widely adopted by the community. Um, many big companies are using it, including Alibaba, Uber, Twitter, etc. Next slide, please. Um, we are going to briefly describe what is the scale of the Presto use case within Facebook. As of today, we have 40K servers. Um, each day, we scan about one exabyte of data. Um, Presto, in addition to do interactive analytics, we also have ETL jobs 
for today, like more than 80% of new ETO jobs, they run on Presto. Next, please. Um, for interactive use case per se, um, well, there are a lot, many use cases, different use cases. So in general, um, the community usually they use Presto Hive, meaning you use Presto to uh, connect to HDFS. Uh, it is usually for general purpose dashboarding or ad hoc queries. Users are just typing in SQL and do data analytics to see what are the results to analyze the data. Also, like customers, they build dashboard or alert to check what's going on with their product. Um, that's for Presto Hive. Also, Presto has another connector connecting to something we call Raptor. So Raptor is like Presto Hive, but uh, use local SSD. Uh, it is an extremely low latency dashboard. Um, we in Facebook, we um, have really critical dashboard like revenue or DAU, like MAU, such dashboard are critical. We want to have fast dashboard serving. We also use um, this kind of connector to serve A-B testing purpose. Um, the fleet size between Presto Hive and Presto Raptor, they are almost the same. Um, so we have generic dashboarding. We also have low latency, high requirement um, dashboard service. We also have other connectors, including MySQL, um, but those use cases are a little bit minor. Next slide, please. So I'm going to briefly introduce architecture of Presto Hive and Presto Raptor and to describe the problems. Next slide, please. So this is a typical uh, architecture of Presto Hive. And in this talk, we're going to use the term Presto instead because this is the more general concept adopted by the community. So how Presto works in general, it receives a SQL and the planner and an optimizer will ask the Hive meta store to get where the tables partitions are. Um, then it will generate the query execution plan. The scheduler will ask HDFS where those files are and send each file as a working unit to all the Presto workers in a load balancing way. So we have hundreds of thousands of workers. They will start to pull data from remote HDFS and read data and the process data based on the um, generated SQL plan and return the result back. So this architecture is completely disaggregated, meaning not only the meta store, but the storage, they are completely disaggregated from the Presto servers. Presto doesn't contain any data and the storage doesn't have any compute logic. Next slide, please. Um, in contrast, um, how Raptor works is a little bit different. So the Presto Raptor connector works in the way that it receives a SQL string uh, sent to optimizer, it's the same. Then it asks the file locations from something we call a Raptor Metastore. It's a MySQL Metastore. And all the data, actually they start not in a remote HDFS, they are stored co-located with Presto workers. So we don't have this aggregated storage. Every storage is co-located with a Presto worker. In this case, Presto Rapture is not only a compute engine, it is also a storage engine. It is combining both so that once you store and once you send the working unit to all the workers, workers not only going to do the compute, but also going to fetch data from this local SSD. So those are the two major difference between the Presto and Raptor. Next slide, please. Um, as I've mentioned before, like uh, the interactive user case in Facebook for Presto and Raptor, they are mostly half-half. Uh, they are serving different purpose. We use uh, this too uh, to serve uh, different users. There are pros accounts and a different uh, scenario where we adopt this too. Uh, the pros of Presto is it's large scale because HDFS completely disaggregated. It's exabyte large or maybe even larger. Um, you can scale compute and storage independently. Uh, the downside of Presto is latency is pretty high, usually some minute, because you need to take data uh, from a remote server. Also, the meta store is usually coarse, comparing with 
uh, at events like um, Iceberg or um, Delta Lake. It's only containing partition level meta information. On the other hand, Rapture is way faster, usually 10, 10 times faster than Presto because um, everything you just save on local SSD. Um, but the problem is um, how much data you can store on SSD, right? It's usually petabyte large per cluster. Um, and you cannot scale storage and compute independently. That fundamentally limits how much data you can actually query. Go ahead. So I will give the uh, host to uh, Rohit to talk about the how we got a re-architecture and how we solve the problems between these two. Okay, uh, thanks James for a wonderful introduction of Presto and Raptor, um, especially highlighting the problems uh, Raptor was facing. Uh, most of our problems uh, were coming because Raptor usage within Facebook was growing at unsustainable pace. Uh, like twice, uh, it was just getting like double at very quickly, and it was becoming uh, practically impossible to maintain the source of both data into the local SSD available with each worker. There were other issues too. Uh, the local SSDs uh, having, uh, sorry, the local workers having uh, the storage. Uh, makes consistency issues because your source of truth is uh, stored is available in the STFS, you have the replica copy available in the SSD. Not only bring consistency issues, but it's very difficult to maintain a separate storage from the warehouse policies perspective regarding um, disaster recoveries or privacy and security of the data. And we were facing the scalability challenges as James talked about too. So it was practical and essential to disaggregate storage with uh, computation because one other problem was uh, with respect to the computation with the peak and non-peak uh, traffic was very different so for the non-peak traffic was quite low and for the peak traffic we were not able to grow elastically because the storage was associated with it and storage is limited so we decided to disaggregate storage and uh, computation. As you can uh, see the new architecture, uh, the local SSD with the workers available is only used as the cache. So earlier it was storing like all the data, but now the new local, uh, the SSD available with local workers was, be, was being used. It was mostly storing, I'm talking about uh, the blue part. So it was mostly storing the most reusable uh, data items like uh, open file objects, footer, uh, footer objects, and the local data files. We did other improvements to the system to make sure it is equally fast as the earlier Raptor was. It had the advantage of all the data available in the local uh, disk, local flash. But with new architecture, only the limited data can be available with uh, local SSD. So it was important to worry about uh, good cache hit rates to make sure the overall latencies do not suffer. We also did a lot of other work uh, in the metadata caching and other improvements. Uh, I'm not gonna focus on that part in this talk. So we will only talk about uh, the data caching improvements effort uh, we did for Raptor. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So one of the important uh, um, critical thing uh, when we are doing, when any distributed system doing the caching is the uh, node affinity. So every worker has a different uh, data sets would be available in its local cache. So it's very important that when we are assigning the jobs, we call them split to the same nodes which had the data cache available. So when the coordinator or the distributor, which is assigning jobs to different nodes, it has to make the best effort to send the job uh, associated with the data to the same worker, which has the data available. Earlier, Presto used to use random node scheduling. It basically used to assign a job to random nodes. 
trying to make sure uh, the job assignment is fair and there are no SKUs available. But this doesn't really work uh, if the local, if the worker has local data available and can potentially benefit uh, in terms of query latencies. So the one which we implemented was pretty simple. We were just taking the path and uh, doing the hash, getting the hash code out of it and uh, basically dividing it by the number of nodes and uh, getting them in there and uh, just using that particular worker. It worked great for us, uh, but as you can see, it can have problems when the node capacity changes, uh, whether it's reduced or increased. Basically, your assignment uh, would go off. But the first preliminary solution works great for us for now, and we will make uh, further improvements to that to later on to the agnostic of uh, capacity changes. Can we go to the next? So, with affinity scheduling, the data caching can become pretty uh, impactful. Data caching needs no introduction, it's pretty opti uh, pretty popular optimization technique to basically cache the working data set closer to the compute node. And the idea is basically with lesser trips to the remote source uh, should help in the latency and uh, computation and IO. Can we put it the next slide? So when it came to using uh, caching to these local SSDs available, uh, there were various options and various uh, ways this could have been approached. Facebook itself had uh, various internal caching libraries available, uh, which we could have used. But the problem uh, with those libraries, the first one was they were not open source. And in Presto, we try our best to use technologies available only in the open source because it is open source and we try to release as much, uh, pretty much everything uh, to the open source community. So we, that, and the other problem was some of these uh, caching solutions were available as a service, uh, which may or may not have worked great for us because um, using a service would incur uh, additional hops and latencies. Uh, and wrapper being latency sensitive, it was a problem. The other thing we were looking for uh, the open source community uh, to provide some solutions to us. And the other options was uh, build our own because we thought it might work for us because we understand our requirements, we understand our data set, and it would have been uh, quite, efficient, uh, quite efficient when it comes to computation. Uh, can we go to the next slide? So we decided to build something, a naive solution to start with. Uh, the idea was pretty simple. As we were copying the data from the remote source location, we were we started uh, dumping these to the local disk. And we were also merging these files um, to make sure like the file counts on the disk remains low. Uh, because some of these files were really small because we do, we have like various access pattern. We do access smaller, uh, Data sets, we also access bigger data sets as well. Um, so, when we tried this solution, it worked really great for us for a couple of hours uh, use cases where the data access demand was not that high and we were able to manage uh, the respective load uh, relatively well in our uh, local flash storage available. But for some of our other solution where data access demand was quite high, it didn't work uh, that well for us. And that was reflected in a few, uh, few of the metrics we were available. One of the metrics was quite uh, quite uh, telling a story. Um, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, so this particular metric, the cash hit rate, uh, as you can see, it was going uh, up and down quite drastically. Uh, this was basically telling, like as we were uh, accessing data and it was getting merged into files, uh, it was going towards like better cache rate. And uh, these big files, as soon as the eviction event was occurring, it was evicting like these big files and uh, 
practically emptying the cache directories and uh, resulting into close to zero cache hit rate. So this basically taught us, this experiment basically taught us uh, that uh, we cannot really evict uh, these big files and uh, we need to work with smaller units uh, when it comes to data. Can, can we go to the next slide? So one of the important aspect was segment data caching. We understood that we need to read, write, and evict into the smaller units of uh, data. Uh, basically, when we are reading, we need to read into the smaller blocks. When we are writing to the cache, we need to write into the smaller block. And when the eviction event occurs, we need to evict into the smaller units. Another important aspect, like uh, which obviously was because the local cache library worked great for us for a couple of use cases. Uh, our new caching solution has to be uh, one of Java-based uh, open source library. We were not really willing to try out uh, caching as a service solution. Uh, we wanted like a uh, we understood like async uh, caching operations has to be asynchronous because under the load and CPU comes uh, under strain, uh, we wanted to make sure uh, writing to cache does not become an important job or or vice versa. We want to make sure we do serve user queries with, without wasting the uh, CPUs on writing to the cache and things like that. We also thought like semantic aware caching would do great for us. Uh, most of the data we read in the Raptor or Presto is in the ORC file format, which is a columnar uh, format. And this columnar format has various structure. It has like the file footer, it has different stripes, it has different stripe footer. So we understood if the caching solution understand these um, boundaries, it can efficiently manage the data in a better way than being blind to these. Uh, can we go to the next slide? So with these learnings, uh, we uh, we learned about Alexio and uh, they being expert in the caching solutions, we decided to talk to them. Uh, when we learned about uh, Alexio, they were only available as a service, uh, agnostic to different data storage and working heterogeneously across various systems. But they were quite willing to work uh, on a solution for Facebook Presto uh, and providing a Java-based uh, libraries for our use cases. And we were we agreed to be the guinea pig of the caching solutions. But the important thing was um, Alexio had uh, in the offering like whatever we were looking for, which is like segment-based data caching. They also had pluggable eviction policies offering multiple evictions. They also provided uh, configurations for various aspects like eviction policies, resource usage, and things, etc. They were providing detailed uh, stats for the cache usage, like hit rate, eviction rate, um, um, right, right path, uh, things like that. Uh, one of the important uh, thing in the uh, when it comes to dealing with SSD is to watch out your writes because you can only write a certain number of times. So understand. Uh, the usage, like how much you are writing to the cache, and uh, be able to put uh, uh, to put to put controllers on that becomes very important. We were also building solutions where caching does not become like a single point of failure. Basically, if for some X Y Z reason you are not able to read or write to the cache, your normal operation should become should become uh, operational. So with that approach, we were quite excited to work with Alexio and we decided to integrate with Alexio for our use cases. And it was great for us. Um, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, so we integrated, uh, next slide please. Yeah, so with uh, this integration, we decided to benchmark uh, our work with a uh, few of use cases. And uh, what we did basically, we took like two days worth of queries from our production cluster and we shadowed uh, those queries to our test cluster. We roughly use around 17,000 queries. Our test cluster was built with 600 workers and each had uh, 460 GB available for the data caching. Uh, we used uh, 
least recently used eviction policy for this. And we also use like one MB as the block size, right? which means like all the events related to read, write, and evict were in the one MB size. So with this, uh, next slide, please. So, oops, okay. So with this, uh, we were able to see like remarkable improvement in our query execution time. Uh, basically, you can see like uh, uh, P50 improved by 33%, P75 improved by more than 50%, and P95 improved by close to four, uh, 50, which is 48%. So it was quite impactful uh, for our data set, and uh, we were quite happy with what we did. Uh, can we go to the next slide? So one of the important savings came in the scan, uh, which is IO. So we were uh, reading like 57% less data from the uh, our remote storage, uh, which is quite important so that we can uh, scale uh, compute uh, and uh, storage independently. Uh, can we go to the next slide? And last but not the least, as you can see, like the cache hit rate remains fairly um, fairly good. It was mostly over um, 90%. There were a few dips, which also tells the story, which is basically as soon as uh, the large data request, which is not cache, comes to, comes to it, it reduces our cache hit rate. Of our so this tells about like our future work. So we are trying to work on better configurations for things like what should be cached, what are hard data and things like that. And we are working towards that direction. Because of here. Um, next slide. I think that's it from my side. Now Bin would be talking about the work uh, the Alexio team did to build this local data cache library. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Rohit, and thanks to James. Actually, let's pause here a little bit. I saw one question uh, from the audience. Is Facebook using open source or enterprise edition of Luxio? So I, I can help answer this question. So we are uh, collaborating as a open source two, two open source communities. Uh, essentially, everything we're working here is in the open source. Yeah. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to post it into either the Slack channel, so you can always go back and see the answers, and we will post the answers there. Or you can, if you have problems logging to Slack channel, you can just use the question uh, chat box here. Either way will work. So in the next few slides, I'm just briefly talking about how we build this Alexa local cache. Uh, it's a, a tr quite interesting journey, because in the beginning, uh, when, I was, when I just started talking with the Facebook team, I thought this is like a very uh, easy piece of cake because we have been working on this caching space for many years, multiple years. Uh, the Alexio project started in 2013. So uh, I thought like we can just glue different things together and build a on client side, uh, like a client library version of Alexio easily. But turns out the Facebook uh, there is a very unique challenges in Facebook workloads and in Facebook's requirements, which makes us to think twice, how do we want to build this uh, smartly and how do we want to build this in a better way to uh, make resource more efficient, make performance better, make integration between two open source software even smoother. So a lot of different challenges like this. Uh, we spent maybe last four months, four or five months working on this project closely with JMS and Rawhead. And we have achieved a lot. So in the next few slides, uh, I'm going to go through this process and show you some tips or my insights, learnings uh, from this engineering effort. For those of you who haven't really heard Aluxu before, it's, uh, it's very, it's also an open source software. It's an open source data orchestration layer sitting between the computation layer and the storage layer. It's commonly used for data analytics as a OLAP, on, such as an OLAP on Hadoop. Actually, in the early days, uh, Alexio was caught, it was a research project called Taikyung from UC Berkeley MPLAB. And in the early days, it was actually a part of the Spark to uh, manage the uh, 
of heap storage in Spark, of heap in memory block storage for Spark. And later on, we make this as more general purpose file system and also rebranded re this into Aluxio uh, to make it not only work with Spark, but also working with all different other applications in the analytics space. And also lately, we start to work more with uh, AI frameworks like uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch. So this is a very fast growing open source community. Uh, starting from 2012, we have zero, 0.1 release, right? we have only one contributor who is the founder of this project, Hao Yun Li. And now in the, I don't have the latest number, but for in end of last year, we have over a thousand contributors on GitHub uh, who have contributed co source code to this project. Our recent release, late, latest the stable release is 2.20 and released in March 2020. And in this release, we provided the client side caching solution and that's the base that forms the basis working with presto uh, for this particular talk aluxio has been deployed in the past few years deployed in hundreds of different companies across different uh, sectors and this is only a snapshot for the logos i know using aluxio but this is a, a really a subset and from here you can see different sectors, companies from different sectors are trying to use this as a solution, data solution, to help their data platform either speed up their performance or help to ease their management for their data platform to make the life of the data admin and developer a little bit easier. Uh, go back to the topic today. So what we are doing here, with particularly with Facebook team, is to build a um, local cache version of the Luxio rather than requiring to start Aluxio servers, Aluxio uh, master workers, we make this as library, an uh, option of library. So essentially we create something called Aluxio caching file system inside face, in, inside Presto. And this Aluxio caching file system is exposing a Hadoop or HDFS compatible API to Presto workers. So inside this Presto server JVM, Presto worker may request a certain data and it will go through the HDFS API cost and talking to this Alexio caching file system. Alexio caching file system inside will, will decide whether this is something already cached. If it's a cache hit, it goes to the Alexio local cache manager, which is uh, sitting on top of the local storage and uh, return the data from this local storage. Uh, or if it's cache miss, it will go to the external file system, like uh, for example, the Facebook's own uh, warm storage, or in Alexio, we can also talk to Alexio file system to they get data and put this data back into the cache manager. So there are actually a few interesting observations, or I would say like a challenges we, we have met to in the past few months to uh, accomplish the design and the implementation. Uh, first, like during maybe the very first meeting with uh, James and Rohit, I was told uh, the basically the press to workloads seen by Facebook is very uh, SIG heavy and you don't really see a big, well, it's all mixed, but uh, for a lot of cases, you see queries that is reading data a lot, but it's non-sequential. So it's going from one place to another after fetching a small portion of the data in the file. So that's motivation for us to create a segment-based caching solution rather than using, a, like in Alexio system, where Alexio service, we're using a block-based caching and the block, the unit of the block is much larger. Uh, by default, it's 64 megabytes. And uh, so we learned this is not something, this will be a lot, there will be a lot of waste in, a lot, in serving Facebook workloads. So we changed this to a segment, which is one megabytes by default, um, segment-based caching. And we also learned actually the Presto server, Facebook, the Presto workloads make the Presto servers highly, highly concurrent, running in a highly, highly concurrent way. And we need to make sure uh, this highly concurrent workloads can access data locally cached in Luxio is, uh, 
highly performed. So we designed this to be a fine grain locking across different segments. And also we apply techniques like uh, lock striping to really make the overhead very minimal. Also, uh, as you can see from the previous figures Rahid has shown, the queries are can be also can be bursty. So we sometimes you see a lot of queries uh, coming in at the same time. That means we need to really make this async operations to work to avoid at the same time we're saturating the disk or SSD bandwidth. And also we uh, in this local cache implementation, we uh, we from the very beginning we on the same we are aligned that we need to make this a very pluggable or optional. You can choose different policies. For example, we implemented two eviction policies. One is LRU, one is LFU. Two eviction policies to test or to easy to ease the test in Facebook. Uh, also, we put this pluggables. We implemented pluggable cache storage options. Uh, by default. This local cache is using the file system to store uh, segments. Each segment is stored as one file, but there are some optimizations we applied to avoid having a single directory containing too many files. That will also kill the performance. And on top of that, uh, in case you have very, you have the file system or storage is not friendly to handle a lot of small files. We also provide the option to use RocksDB you can simply switch the storage option to use RocksDB to store each segment. So these are two optional, optional uh, implementation for the local storage. Uh, yeah, so we built this Alexio local cache and we have released this as part of the Alexio client jar since 2.2.0, uh, released in last month, actually in March. We, if you're using this local cache option, no extra server is required to, to launch. You don't need to launch any Alexio service and it can be easily used in uh, JVM, in other JVM based applications like Presto. But there, I just want to clarify here, the local cache has a certain its advantage because it's very easy to install. It's very easy to start, uh, requires no extra service. On the other side, Alexio full system or Alexio service supports the full functionalities and you can do a free and ping and TTL and also the metadata caching and auto sync between Alexio system with the end of storage is one very unique, something very unique inside Alexio. And you can also uh, use your familiar file system CLIs like LS or uh, delete file or create a new directory uh, from the file system interface we're exposing in the Alexio service. And in the latest release, we also have the transformation service, which can transform data in one format, like a JSON or a, like a CSV, to a different format, like Park Parquet. So this, this, is, this is the trade-off. You pay less complexity to get the easy uh, installation or easy management, easy programming. But also, if you bring the full system, you get a full set of functionalities. Yeah, so here is the last of flight. I'm talking about uh, the timeline and also the future work. Today, to enable uh, the Presto and Alexio, you only need to enable the three different options in the properties. And this will be available in the next Presto release. Rocket, James, and I are working actively on merging the code change back to Presto code base. Uh, hopefully this can be merged in the next few days. And in the future, we uh, during the past discussion, we have a lot of uh, ideas. We want to further enhance this solution. Uh, one thing Rocket just mentioned is that semantics of weird caching. If you know this is the ORS file or if this is a proxy file, and you know which part is the metadata, which part is the data, and which part maybe is the uh, the the columns the you know the differentiation between different columns and maybe you can do a better and smarter caching uh, decision. And also there are more performance tuning work. We decide to uh, make this more efficient. How do we uh, make CPU utilization higher, uh, make CPU resource more, uh, more efficient and how to use memory more efficient. And all these are the next steps we're trying to address. So that's so much for 
today uh, about the technical part for this collaboration. If you have any questions, feel free to raise a question right now. And the recording will be available in the next uh, few days to play back. So I see, actually see quite a few questions here. Um, maybe Rohit and James, you can unmute yourself and we can start to answer these questions. Let me see. Okay, let's go one by one. I just answered one. Is Facebook using open source? The next question is, uh, does this compare, does this compare with Dremel, Dremel uh, from Srinivasa? I assume this question is asking the stack of Presto on top of Aluxio, right? Rather than either Presto or Aluxio. So uh, my answer, this is my answer, but Rahid and James, feel free to chime in. Uh, my answer is, I mean, in a high level, they, share, they must share some commonality. It's all for OLAP and there is some caching insight, right? But in, in terms of implementation details, I'm sure this is a very different approach. And, uh, or Rahid or James, do you have any other thoughts on this? Um, actually, actually, I didn't find a question. Do we know where the question so I can read it? Uh, okay, so this question is on the, uh, maybe only I can see it because I'm the, I'm the presenter, I don't know. But I can just repeat the question. Does this compare with Dremel? How does this compare with Dremel? So Dremel from Google? Dremel. Dremel is another open source uh, OLAP. Computation framework. Okay. Right. Um, unfortunately, we haven't compared this work with other um, product. Uh, we do know, like, there's one that's Rubric. They are implementing something similar. The next question, uh, par uh, Apache Parquet Arrow. Um, I'm not sure that's a question, but positioned as a SQL engine against the data and the data lake on S3 HDFS. Uh, I guess this is one question. Uh, sorry, uh, three need that sense. Can you just put this question on Slack? And I could not really, I, I feel like I cannot correctly parse the question and we can from, get from there. Let's go to the next question. Can this local cache be used with any other software like uh, Slur or Solar? Or is it special, specially built for Presto? Uh, okay, I can help answer this question. Uh, in theory, this local cache can be used by any other software. But right now, we're working closely with the Presto community to uh, make this work well. And what, one of the reasons why uh, I cannot make a universal claim at the current stage is uh, typically what we found is uh, different software has a different implementation, although a lot of different computation frameworks, they are standardized in using HDFS API, but there's a lot of technical details inside. So you have to run this and test this to verify uh, different things. So in theory, it is the answer is a yes, but to give you really a very uh, educated answer, we need to run the test and and maybe there's something to, there are some small issues, corner cases need to uh, fill. But even like during the integration with Presto, we found <laughs> a lot of the different uh, small small things which can really affect the correctness. And we, uh, for example, uh, HD, in Presto code base, they're using an extended file system API on top of HDFS. And how to make that work with a Presto, with a Luxio, and we have to think about some smart ways to work this around. So each system, they kind of like a optimize or customize a little bit regarding the standards standards. So that's the I think that's the current status. Uh, the next question also what if the underlying storage is S3? Would it local cache put data from S3 and store it on local storage? Yes. Yeah. So for S3, uh, right now we are not really it's not really tested yet. We only test it in Facebook storage and in using Aluxio as the storage. But in the future, we plan to support S3. 
I, I think S3 can naturally just work um, because S3 file system in um, our code base, it's HDFS compliant, so it can be plugged into our Axial file system, so it should work. Yeah. Uh, the next question, is Facebook using bare metal nodes, VMs, or containers to run Alexio? So maybe James or Rahid, you can help. Um, Alexio in this case will be a library. So it will be referenced by Presto binary directly and Presto runs on top of container. Next question. Do you think the challenges integrating Alexio with Presto at Facebook is common to other Presto deployments too. Um, from my side, I feel like once the integration is done, other deployments should be just like a, a, as long as the, the the source code is done, it should be just done. Yeah, as long as they have local SSD or local disk, it should be naturally down. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like once this work is done, uh, any other deployments can benefit. If you upgrade to a later newer version, you can benefit from this local cache. Uh, next question from Du. Hi, Du. Uh, in the local cache mode, can we configure the segment size? Yes, this is uh, something you can configure. And by default, the default value is 1 MB. Um, and this is from some previous study I did in Microsoft Research when I was an intern in Microsoft Research. And uh, so it's it's educated guess, but we haven't really tested other cache sizes, uh, other segment sizes. Uh, for file merging, how does it work? Any cached file will be merged together or only in small files? This is, I, I think James, he implemented that part, so you can help answer. Um, I did a very naive caching. It's just like uh, you fetch different part of a file. If you found that they're continuous, it just merged together, no matter it's a small file or large file. Uh, which channel in Slack are people posting questions to? You can go to the general channel, that's fine. Uh, we try to, we, we just try to stick to one channel so everyone can just watch out this channel. Uh, from Choi Win. So in theory, we could add a client jar to Spark jobs and could use a similar caching too. Is that right? Yes, yes, I think that's correct. Um, yeah, although I haven't really tested this because I'm too busy testing this with uh, with Unpresto so far. But in theory, that's the case. As long as you put a Aluxio client jar and you put Aluxio as the schema, yeah. Uh, with actually, yeah, I want to emphasize here a little bit. In other applications, you have to use Aluxio comma slash slash as the address. Other than, otherwise, the Aluxio client job will not be picked up, uh, will not be recognized as the as the caching or as the file system implementation for a Hadoop compatible file system address. Right? But for Presto, we're doing the integration, so it's a little bit different. And there can be flags you can set telling people, oh, I just want to use Aluxio as the caching layer, but the data is still from, for example, the Presto warm storage. For the benchmark results, do we have any efficiency improvement rates to check out? Uh, maybe Rohit can answer that. Uh, as far as I know, like um, the caching work will not affect CPU saving. It is the same CPU usage. It's just going to improve the latency. Yeah, I think like uh, in my experiment, I never found uh, any CPU improvement. They were more or less same for different use cases, which can be understood. Like the additional CPU is taken to write to cache uh, and maintaining the cache data set in the local SSD. Yeah, actually, and this is something on our agenda. We try to explore in the future how we can even maybe reduce the resource consumption. Next question. Would a local cache work with private workers serving data from S3 storage? 
Um, I assume it will work. We haven't really tested. We have data that is used by both Spark and Presto. What do you recommend we proceed with trying Love Seal? Yeah, so if you have data shared between Spark and Presto, then you cannot really use this local cache version. The data cached inside a, a local Presto, cached inside this local JVM, Presto Worker JVM, is only available to this local Presto JVM. So if you want to have data cached but shared across different frameworks, even different processes, then the Luxio system is what you should look for. What's the scalability limit that Luxio can support? How does the directory work when there are a huge number of small files? Thanks. Uh, I, I, I just want to get a little bit clarification here. When you say uh, maybe the maybe the, the person who asked this question can help clarify here. When you see a huge number of small files, do you mean uh, the from the user the files the user see or the logical the logical file system user is seeing has a lot of small files or in the implementation of Luxio, we're storing a lot of small files. Yeah, so these, the, the answer to these two are different. I will get back to this question later. Uh, would you agree that all, latent, all low latency queries use case on HDFS uh, slash et cetera will benefit from this Aluxio Presto integration? My answer is I, I, will, I will expect that. That's my expectation. Uh, what's, or uh, in, in general, this should be the case. Yeah, actually, it is very much workload dependent because if your workload or if your queries are very much repetitive or you are fetching some hot tables, um, this should definitely work. Um, if your workload is completely uniformly distributed, meaning every table has the same chance of being hit and every part of the table has the same chance of being fetched, um, this is probably not going to be very much better. Our next question is, does, does Presto support predicate pushdown? And if it does, does Alexa interface with that? Um, Presto does support predicate pushdown. Um, we have future and the scan um, fused together. Um, unfortunately, um, this is not yet pushed into Alexa because we, serve, uh, we treat Alexa as a file system. Um, we do not expect a file system to be any smart um, to do the, any compute or evaluation. Of course, we know like F3 um, can push down select. Yeah, for, for Alexio, we, uh, on the Alexio side, we want to, we want to interface with the Presto predicate pushdown, but that is not really, uh, that is not in the effort we're making, the topic, this is not related to the topic we're talking here. That is on another top direction, Alexa is going with Presto called uh, Structured Data Service. So essentially for the, uh, the conventional way to integrate Alexa with Presto is to let Presto treat Alexio as another file system, just like HDFS, a different implementation for HDFS interface. So that the, that's the conventional way. In the 2.2 or 2. I think 2.1 release for Alexio, we introduce another interface providing a table abstraction for the data. That means Alexio can tell this is a table and the table has different partitions and the table is using this schema. And using that service called structured data service to talk to uh, Presto. And we hope that is the, in the future, we can support uh, more pushdowns which is independent, orthogonal to the topic we're talking today. Uh, next question, is Alexio Cloud agnostic? Can it work with S3 and Azure data, data model? Yes, yes, Alexio is uh, cloud agnostic. You can mount Alexio, you can mount different S3 uh, buckets or different S3 implementation. There are different S3 implementations 
uh, and or using other blob storage like uh, Azure and mount this storage into a Luxio system uh, as the Ender storage, but providing the same logical Luxio file system mm -hmm. to the applications. Cool. I, I think this is a this is the last question. So I will go back to the uh, the limitation uh, scalability limitation question. Uh, how does the directory work when there are huge number of small files? So uh, assume my guess is this is talking about Alexio is on top of a files another storage which has a lot of small files. If that is the case, Alexio does since 2.0. Alexio does provide certain optimizations to aiming solving this problem. Uh, one, of the, one of the problem is if you have a lot of small files, each small file will take certain amount of resource from the Alexio metadata service node, which is a master node, or certain memory. And if you have a lot of small files, that will take a lot of memory resource. And because Alexio is a JVM based, that will take a lot of JVM on heap storage and creates a lot of GC pressure. So to solve that problem, we introduced the flag. You can use RocksDB to store this, we call the inode information for each file of each directory uh, and significantly reduce the amount of pressure on JVM on heap storage resource. So that's one answer. The other part is uh, we do see a lot of use, a lot of cases, people are storing a lot of small files into object store like S3, but listing a file or object store like S3 is, is not efficient, is not designed to be efficient. Actually, uh, people running Presto or Spark during the planning phase, typically the scheduler will do this type of query and that can take a lot of time. But Alexio is doing a different approach so we can help this better by storing, by caching the metadata into a Luxo metadata service. So we do, that's one of the case we want to provide performance benefits. Uh, the next question, will we get a recording of the webinar? Yes, that will be available soon, maybe tomorrow, by tomorrow. Cool, I think we're running out of time. Thank you, thanks for the speakers and thanks for the audience joining uh, join this session. Uh, I'm, Pretty glad to chat with you guys. This is a lot of good questions. Okay. Thanks, Ben, and everyone. See you later. Bye.